video vignette is about a nurse who is confirming a surrogate decision maker and providing information to a family over the phone. Elizabeth is a 46 year old female who lives alone. She has no family, no partner, no children. She works at a shelter for women in crisis. Two weeks ago, she began to feel unwell. She developed fevers, body aches, and a cough. She's become progressively worse, so much so that yesterday she went to the emergency room. She was tested for COVID-19 and that came back positive. She then became so bad with respiratory distress that she was placed on a ventilator. A next of kin, Caroline, was found by the social worker. Caroline has called into the floor this morning to talk to Elizabeth's nurse, Marion. Marion will confirm that she's indeed the surrogate decision maker and will provide her information to help her think about goals of care. Hello, this is Caroline Smith speaking. Hi, Caroline. My name is Miriam James. I'm one of the nurses at West Hospital. I think you called this morning? Yes, yes, I did. I, I called um, first thing. I got a, a message from the social worker last night that my aunt Elizabeth was admitted. Um, can you give me an update about how she's doing? Right. So before I can do that, um, let me just clarify. Um, so what's your relationship to her? Uh, yes, she. I'm her niece. Um, she's the sister of my mom. Um, she often puts me down as an emergency contact, and um, I believe I'm her decision maker. She's not able to make decisions. Okay, so she's designated you uh, to be her surrogate decision maker. She can't make decisions? I, I believe that's right. We signed a paper probably a year ago now. Um, uh, I think that was the effect. Okay. All right. Um, I just needed to know who I was talking to so that I can give information. So when was the last time that you actually talked to your aunt? Um, I believe it was on Tuesday. Um, she did mention that she felt rather tired and was having some body aches, but she just thought it was a general a cold probably. Um, nothing seemed very serious, but I guess it must have escalated. Is, is she okay right now? So um, your aunt came in because um, she ended up really having bad fevers and got really short of breath um, and was really weak. And so she came to the emergency room and she was admitted. Okay. Um, so as you know, um, right now, um, when people are admitted to the hospital, it means they're really sick. Yeah. Yeah. So um, have you heard of COVID-19? Yes, I have. Is okay. It? So once we saw those symptoms, we were really worried and we, um, we tested her and she was came back positive for COVID-19. Okay. So what does that mean? Is, is she in a lot of pain right now? Um, She's not in any pain, um, but her breathing, um, uh, she really had a hard time breathing. And so um, we had to put her on a machine to help her breathe. Um, so she's really not able to talk to you right now because in order for her to be on the machine and for it not to be uncomfortable, we have to give people medicines so that they don't feel the tube um, that much. But she doesn't seem like she's in pain otherwise. Okay. Um, and so what are the next steps? Um, how long will she be in the hospital? Um, right. So good questions. Um, you know, the challenge with this COVID-19 is that everybody reacts differently to it. And so we don't know um, how she's going to do. We're giving her antibiotics to help her fevers. We're giving her some medicines to help body aches. Um, and we're just trying to keep her comfortable and see if we can get her through this. Um, that all makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. So okay, can you tell me a little bit about your aunt? Um, it, you know, was she well before this and pretty active? Oh, yeah. I mean, we sometimes went for runs together. Um, definitely very active. And um, she didn't have any, um, or not that I'm aware of, she didn't have any um, pre-existing conditions or any um, immune, autoimmune diseases or anything. Um, she, yeah, she's very healthy. Um, she was pretty young she's 46 so um yeah i think she i'm surprised that she's this sick i guess that's the main thing yeah. well this is this disease has been kind of um um 
challenging because people can get sick pretty fast and we just don't know who and when they'll get sick. Um, so had you all ever talked about like if she got really sick, how aggressive of treatment she wanted or, you know, what she thought of quality of life? Yeah, so I wouldn't say we talked about it so explicitly in those terms, but um, like I mentioned, she did ask me to sign that paper about a year ago. And um, I think, you know, she's not married and she doesn't have any kids of her own. Um, and so I think she felt like I was the most similar to her more so than her sister. Like we just think the same ways. And, um, I think she trusted me to make choices for her, but I really think that she, she'd want to fight this as best she can. And I think she had a lot more she wanted to do with her life. Um, like I said, she's, she's not that old. And, um, I just, I really want you to give her every chance you can. And I, th I think, I think she's strong and she's tough and I, th I think she can fight this if, if you do as much as you can for her, please. All right. Um, so I'll let the doctors know that we had this phone call and that you are her healthcare decision maker. And I want you to know that we are doing everything we can. You know, we'll okay. continue to give her medicines to help with her fevers, help with her any discomfort she has, help with her breathing, okay. and to try to treat the virus. Um, it's a little bit busy here, so I don't want you to have to wait again when you call. Um, so one of the things that I would think um, is that maybe we can have you try to call you know, between two and four in the afternoon, because then we finish rounding okay. and then you won't have to wait, but, but you know that we can talk to you at that time. Does that seem reasonable? Yeah. I can okay. Of course, if anything, we need to talk to you before then or whatever, we would call you in a minute. Okay. Sure. Yes. Okay. All right. So um, we'll continue to take the best care of her. And um, I'll tell her that we, you, we, and I talked, I'll tell you that you're really concerned and, um, you know, if she's able to, we'll figure out um, a way for her to talk with you. Okay, that would be great. Yeah, if she's ever awake and just tell her I'm thinking and I love her. And um, yeah, if she's ever awake and able to speak, with, I'd love to hear her voice. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for talking with me. And um, I know we'll be talking more in the days to come. And if I'm not here, there's always another nurse or the other team. Um, and if you have other questions, you know, you might think about writing them down and, um, and then we'll talk again uh, tomorrow. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your call and letting me know and just telling me the honest truth of how she's doing. And yeah, thank you. Okay. All right. Well, you take care and um, we'll talk again soon. Okay. Thank you. Okay.